In the early 1780s, Massachusetts created their first state constitution. Now this constitution was created just years after the Declaration of Independence, and you can tell because it was inspired by it. In fact, in the first words that you'll read, all men are born free and equal. Now at this time, it was the tradition, the way that you got this information out, this legislation, these laws, is that you would read it in the town square. When it was read in the town square one day, there's an enslaved woman by the name of Mumbet who's walking through that town square. And in her enslaved state, she hears these words that everyone in Massachusetts is born free and equal. She's confused, obviously. But instead of living with said confusion, she takes it to court. She took her slaveholder, John Ashley, to court, sued for her freedom, and her and her lawyer argued that she should be free because the institution itself is unconstitutional in the state of Massachusetts. And she wins. Now, does this story matter? It might not if young girls don't hear about it. Currently, less than 10% of the history that's taught in American history classrooms is about women. Now, there are two interesting things about this. One, of the women that are required to be taught in the classroom, two of them are Molly Pitcher and Rosie the Riveter. They weren't even real human beings. <laughs> they were made up. They were fictional. Now, of course, they're symbolic from women that did exist during that time, but it begs the question, then why not speak about the actual women? Also, of that 10%, Almost 60% of that 10% talks about women in the role of the helpmate, cooking, cleaning, taking care of the home, helping out the husband. And of course, women made homes, but they also made history. As we know, stories matter. They're incredibly important. We share them with loved ones. We laugh about them. They inspire us and they provide meaning in our lives. Now there's this whole body of research that suggests that if you're not a part of the information that you consume, whether it's what you watch or what you read in the classroom, it suggests that you're not as important. You consider yourself not as important or capable or competent. Currently, it takes a woman to hear about six times, you should run for political office before she starts to think, I should run for political office. Less women negotiate salaries, and even less women will apply for a job if they don't believe that they have 100% of the qualifications. Maybe if young girls start to see themselves in the pages of yesterday, they'll believe in their capacity for all of their tomorrows. I started a nonprofit called Remember the Ladies. And one of the things that we focus on doing is positioning teachers and school districts to incorporate more women's history into American history classrooms because you cannot be what you cannot see. And I think it's important for young girls and young boys to see the capacity of women. Now we do this by supplementing textbooks and supplementing current lesson plans because this isn't about rewriting history. Um, instead, it's about expanding the lens, the director's cut, if you will. Because while Megan Rapino and Serena Williams and Ruth Bader Ginsburg are incredibly inspiring and extraordinary humans, what young girls need to realize is that this has always been their lineage. This is nothing new and it will always be their legacy. In spring of 1776, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson are in Philadelphia. They're talking about declaring independence from that of Great Britain. And they're not simply talking about separating from Great Britain, but instead they are suggesting that we should declare our independence because we believe in this set of principles that all men are created equal and have certain inalienable rights. And some of those are life, 
liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That regardless of your bloodline, regardless of who your parents were, regardless of where you were born into the society, that you are indeed equal. They were figuring out the language that they wanted to use and how they were going to get that done. Meanwhile, John Adams' wife is in Massachusetts holding down the farm with four children and keeping the smallpox epidemic at bay and trying to feed those children through the winter while the British have blocked the ports in Boston. So the only food that they have is what they grew from the summer before, trying to avoid battles and any abuse that the British might provide. And so Abigail had her two cents for her husband as he suggested that they were writing this declaration. She said in this extraordinary code of laws, I ask, that you remember the ladies. And I ask that you do the same. Thank you.